Hey guys, and welcome back, I'm Simon here for the Ether Hub, bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. With our introduction to Amon Ket, we're seeing a lot of new cards with the creature type Cat. Cats have always been a thing in Magic the Gathering and the internet, but Amon Ket is bringing us our first real cat lord in Regal Caracol. Sorry, Raksha, but you're a Leonin. Still technically a cat, but Regal Caracol is not only a better lord, it's also just more, you know, cat-like. And on a world like Amon Cat, why wouldn't we see a card like Regal Caracol? From what we know of this plane, and its aesthetic steep in Egyptian inspiration, cats are creatures, if not considered strictly sacred, are at least respected in the culture and religion of Amon Cat. I mean, one of their gods, Oketra, literally has a cat head. Doesn't get more prominent than that. It's also believed that cats have a strong connection with the afterlife on Amon Cat. The watchers to the embalming chambers are actually statues depicting cats, while many other real cats are embalmed themselves. Yet, while Oketra, the white god, is most closely associated with domesticated cats, the green god Ronus embodies the more wild feline spirit. Undertaking his trial of strength, many initiates fall prey to various wild cats deep within his jungle proving grounds. But none are more deadly than the Slytherin Serpopard, a creature based off of real-world mythology that combines features of both a snake and a cat, making for one deadly test during the trial of strength. Yet, Amonkhet isn't the first plane we've seen with feline friends. In fact, cats have been a recurring creature in MTG since they made their debut in Savannah Lions, a fairly OP card at the time. Although back then, it technically counted as a lion and not a cat, but that was fixed during the Grand Creature update, so it's now included along with its fellow littermates. Yet, if you want to get really technical, the first cat ever in Magic the Gathering was actually Guma, from all the way back in Urza Saga. But like I said, anything remotely cat-like that wasn't originally a cat creature type has been updated. Along with Amon Ket, Innistrad is a plane that has a rich culture and history of adoring their purring buddies. Domestic cats have been seen across a number of different colors, both in the original Innistrad and our more recent return, but they tend to either be white or black aligned creatures. Like Amon Ket, these cats share a hint of paranormal flair, as they're often used to patrol churches and sanctuaries, prowling for demonic activity that people here believe them to be sensitive to. And you thought cats were just lazy. Now I'm quickly going to go over a number of non-sapien cats you can find as you journey across the multiverse. But yeah, some get a little weird. Like the Maka, giant six-eyed felines found on the city plain of Ravnica. Seen on Rubble Belt Maka from Dragon's Maze, these massive creatures are used by the Gruul Clan, often using their enemies as food for the cats. Another species of giant cats are known as the Joval, found on the plain of Mercadia. These huge felines are large enough to be mounted by fully armored warriors, but are far more vicious and deadly than normal steeds, making them the perfect companion for war. Yet, training one of these beasts can take several years. Added to that, the years of practice a warrior must go through in order to actually ride it. Other cats used as war mounts can be found on the Shattered Plain of Alora, more specifically the Shard of Bant. Here, Leo Tao are used for their speed and high intelligence, swiftly and logically maneuvering throughout a battlefield. The Leo Tao are unique because they're sort of like centaurs, being part cat and part horse, having the head of a lion while also being hooved animals. And of course, to spoil anything good in the world, you can also find undead variants of Leo Tai on the Shard of Grixis. I guess these cats really do have nine lives. Things start to heat up a little for this creature type on the world of Dominaria, as you can find native fire cats patrolling the mountains of Oteria. As the name would suggest, these are more like elemental beasts than the cats we've seen so far, but that does have its perks. Along with sharp teeth and claws, these animals employ blistering heat both to cook prey and defend against predators. <laughs> and you thought your cat hates water? Try giving one of these a bath. Back to the basics, here are creatures known as Felidars, proud, stoic, domesticated cats that you can find on both Zendikar and Kaladash. On Zendikar, a plane where you can also find lions and lynx, the Felidars are some of the most ferocious felines in the multiverse, sporting some very impressive and deadly horns. Yet, like on Kaladash, some have managed to tame these animals, using them as strong and loyal guard cats. 
Similarly to the Felidar on Zendikar, the Arnix of Tarkir are large fearsome cats equipped with horns and tusks. These animals make their homes in the mountains of the Teemer frontier, where this clan of nomads give them a wide berth. The Teemer spin tales and lessons from this impressive hunter, who, once it has a prey scent, will track it to the end of the plane in order to kill it. And that does it for all the cats across the multiverse, guys. Eh, well, not all of them. That's just the four-legged kind. Of course, Wizards of the Coast always has to complicate things, so we have something known as Leonin, or cat people to talk about. Yep, we're, we're going there. As you'd imagine, Leonin and those like them with different names are cat people, bipedal anthropomorphic cats with human-like intelligence. They have cultures all their own, and value traits like having a wild spirit and collective unity. Of course, Leonin can change a lot depending on what plane you encounter them on. One of the first Leonin ever seen in MTG, and arguably the first cat ever printed, was Cat Warriors from Legends. This set the stage for a lot of the Leonin we'd see in future sets. Wild, tribalistic, savage. Such is the case with most cat people found on the plane of Dominaria. Found primarily in the jungle regions of Dramora, this solitary race stayed out of world affairs for most of Dominaria's history. That is, until the Phyrexians invaded and spread their people thin with their devastation. Now, cat people can be found all throughout the plain, with three major tribes making up the bulk of their numbers. While the three tribes are all cat people, their cultures are very different. The Leonin are a strong and proud pride of cat people who resemble lions and are deeply connected to white mana while the panther warriors of Urbog are steep in black magic, remaining isolated and neutral to the world around them, but sometimes tending to serve dark forces. And the Nakadal, a tribalistic and shamanistic group of cat people who are ferocious in battle, living truly wild lives. A Nakadal by the name of Miri, once abandoned by her people for having two different colored eyes, which is now a cute factor in cats of our reality, would rise to become a prominent member of the skyship Weatherlight. Of course, in an alternate reality, Miri would kill an angel and become cursed with vampirism. A fun mix of creature types, but not really canon. And who could forget the long heroic tales of Jedit Ohanan, a tiger Leonin who left the jungles and joined a mercenary group, quickly becoming one of the best desert fighters the world's ever seen. Ah, what a storied history of cat people on Dominaria. This plane has also given rise to the first, probably, Leonin Planeswalker, a Black Panther from Urbog by the name of Lord Wingrace. Being one of the most badass cats in MTT history, Wingrace became king of the Panthers in Urbog, commanded a legion of slivers, and closed a time rift with his own magic, but at the cost of his life. Maybe not as well known as another cat planeswalker we'll talk about later, but still pretty amazing. R.I.P. Wingrace. Yet this race isn't found only on Dominaria, they've spread their claws far and dug them deep into the fabric of the multiverse. The more savage Nakadal can be found on the plane once known as Alara, but more specifically on its shard of Naya. This harsh, unforgiving, eat-or-be-eaten world has bred some of the most wild cat people in the multiverse. Yet even here, logic exists in the race, giving them their human-like comparison. Despite such a violent world, the cat people here are split between two cultures. The more peaceful Cloud Nakadal, who call themselves simply Leonin, and the rebellious Savage Nakadal, who believe their kind has become too weak and must return to their feline roots. The Savage Nakadal see the use of armor and weapons by their brethren as a sign of weakness, preferring to use their own teeth, claws, and shamanistic magic to survive the dangers of Naya. This fundamental difference in ideology has pitted the Nakadal and Leonin against each other for years. That is, until Alara became whole once again thanks to the Conflux. With Naya and Bant forming near each other, some of the Cloud Nakadal migrated there and took the Honorable Code of Knights, becoming the strong white mana Leonin we see today. Of course, when talking about the Leonin of Naya, you can't escape talking about some of the major players found on this plane. The biggest of which being a Johnny Goldmane and his brother Jazal. Both were actually members of the Savage Nakadal, the more tribalistic and wild group of cat people found on Naya, and Jazal was in fact the leader of their tribe. Yet, in contrast to the rest of the Savage Nakadal, Jazal wanted nothing more than to make peace with their brothers who made their homes among the clouds. 
In defiance of their very beliefs, Jazal was murdered by the horrific summonings of a pride shaman, causing the spark of one Ajani Golbane, his brother, to ignite, birthing the second Leonin Planeswalker. Ajani spent a lot of his life as an outcast, being a rare albino Leonin which apparently is bad luck. But losing his brother and his sense of belonging in the world has propelled him to many great acts across the multiverse, eventually influencing his decision to join the organized group of planeswalkers known as the Gatewatch. For more of his achievements though, you can find my independent video on Ajani Goldman linked in the video description below. Ajani met some of his multiversal littermates when he traveled to the god-ruled plane of Theros. The Leonin of Theros, like a lot of the cat people, are actually disgraced outcasts. I mean, outcasts. They live in exile due to their history and former allegiance to the Archon known as Agnomachus. Although appearing godly on the world of Theros, Agnomachus actually ruled through tyrannical force, believing he was imposing the strict law of the gods. The Leonin served as the bulk of his military force. After the Archon's fall, the Leonin were banished from major cities, and thus they have separated themselves from all things human on the plane, even down to worshipping the major gods. Ajani knew the Leonin here well. He had made friends with one known as Brahmaz, who upon visiting the plane again found had become king of Oreskos, the major city of the Leonin on Theros. To help his friend in his journey for Elspeth, Brahmaz sent his Leonin in search of the planeswalker finding her for a Johnny who promptly went after her. Next, we venture to the artificial world of Mirrodin, where the Leonin here, like all the living creatures on this plane, were abducted through the machinations of Memnark. As the crazed golem searched the multiverse for a planeswalker spark, he teleported life from other worlds to Mirrodin, dragging what we think were cat people from Naya to Mirrodin. As years passed and the Leonin evolved here, they incorporated metal into their flesh thanks to a strange fungal virus. They make their home in the Razor Fields, raising a capital known as the Ancient Den. They became deeply religious, worshipping the White Son of Mirrodin, and performing sometimes dark ancient rituals. They also managed to tame a flying reptile species of Mirrodin, employing sky hunters who ride them such as the famous Liana and Rania. Yet the ultimate Ka, or leader of the Mirrodin Leonin, was Raksha, Golden Cub, a strong and proud leader who led his people through example. He helped in the overthrow of Memnark, restoring the plane's original creator Karn to power. Karn reversed Memnark's abduction of species, and thus Raksha went back to his own native plane, whatever that was, leaving the Leonin who remained on Mirrodin leaderless and entranced in political upheaval. Yet Kemba, Ka Regent, has stepped forward filling his vacant position, trying as much as she can to stem the bloodshed of her people and bring about some sort of peace. She realizes she can't replace Raksha, but she still tries for the sake of her tribe. Lastly, we venture to the brutal warring plane of Tarkir, a world forged by the fires of battling clans and again in another time by dragon lords. Not the place you'd think to find cat people, right? Well, we've already seen one type of cat from this world, so it's not that far of a stretch, except these cat people are unlike anything we've seen thus far. They're known as the Rakshaza, and they aren't a tribe or a clan. Rather, they're demons. The Rakshaza are tiger-like in appearance, keeping the general theming of anthropomorphic cats we've seen on other worlds. Only these are demons enveloped by dark and powerful magic. It's said that a single Rakshaza can lay waste to an entire army, leaving legions and cities to not but dust and rubble, a power too potent to ignore. Long ago, on a timeline long since forgotten on Tarkir, the ancient members of the Saltai made a deal with these demons in exchange for their dark magic. The power of the Rakshaza cursed some, transforming them into the Naga we see on the world today. Yet, with the very history of the world changed, the Rakshaza have a very different relationship with a very different Saltai. Their ancient Khan, Tassigir the Golden Fang, offended the Rakshaza, who no longer supported the humans of the Saltai. In a desperate bid to secure his power and influence, the Khan reached out to the Dragon Lord Salungar, one of the many Dragon Lords the human tribes were currently at war with. With dragons looking to wipe the Saltai out for good, Tessigur agreed to lead Salungar and his brood to a secret meeting between the ancient Khans, resulting in an ambush known as the Khanfall and the beginning of a Tarkir ruled by dragons. 
Since then, Selimgar has betrayed his human servant and taken complete control of what used to be the Sultai. Even the Rakshasa have returned to offer their power to the Dragon Lord. Yet, even one as ancient and strong as Selimgar fears the power of the Rakshasa, believing they may one day turn against him and end his reign. But he knows for now, their power is too important to deny. And that just about covers everything in regards to cats in Magic the Gathering. You thought they were just lovable house cats, right? Well, they are. And at least in Magic the Gathering, they're a lot, lot more than that. And sometimes, just that. But what's wrong with just a normal cat every now and then, right? Anyway, let me know what you guys think about Cats Across the Multiverse in the comment section below. You can also check out Nizahan's video on the top 10 cat cards ever printed in MTG, video linked at the end or in the description below. If you enjoyed the video and want to support the hub here on YouTube, make sure you leave it a thumbs up and subscribe for more awesome MTG content. As always guys, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time here on the Ether Hub.